it's Ashley. Um, first of all, happy Valentine's Day. Um, I hope your day is filled with love and goodness, whether that's platonic love, romantic love, familial love, whatever. Just love. And if it's not, I love you. So you at least got that. Um, so today I wanted to talk about my experience getting diagnosed with my NF. Um, because it was very different than my experience getting diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder. And I think that they kind of show the differences in how you can take a diagnosis. Um, cause there's definitely, there's no right way to, to accept that news. There's no right way to get that news and move on from it and live your life with it and hold that burden. Um, so this just, I wanted to explain my, uh, the other side of how I dealt with things. Um, so first I would like to make a correction. In a previous video, I said that when I got diagnosed and the doctors didn't believe that I had it, I got a blood test that showed that I did. That is not true. I got a skin biopsy, um, of where my tumors were and where my cafe au lait spots were, which to reiterate, my tumors are benign tumors called neurofibromas. And my um, cafe au lait spots are big spots that look kind of like freckles that are often a sign of neurofibromatosis. Um, so I, I, I wanted to just correct that. My mom pointed out to me that I had gotten that information wrong, but it was a biopsy, not a blood test. Um, so anyway, I originally got diagnosed when I was 11 years old, when I was in sixth grade. Um, I had been having issues at school because, and at home because I had been having a lot of accidents. And at first my parents took me to the doctor and it turned out I had a UTI, which I assume I got it because I was walking around and peed in pants. Um, so I got the medication for a UTI that got all healed, but I was still having these issues. I was still having accidents. And so my parents took me back to the doctor and my doctor, but at the time had been my doctor since I was a baby. And she was like, well, um, I have seen these freckles around her waist for a really long time. I wanted to keep an eye on them. I looked them up and they are a sign of this disease, neurofibromatosis. So you should maybe take her to this clinic, um, see if she fits it. Um, if she fits the markers for the disease and go from there and so we went to the clinic at the children's hospital and they helped me out they looked at you know they did this very awkward procedure where I laid down on a table pretty much naked I had my underwear on and they just were poking me and just like feeling around and trying to find any neurofibromas and trying to find anything like that and I believe in order to get diagnosed, your cafe au lait spots, you need to have at least like three large ones that are larger than a certain size. I'm not sure what the size is. I think it's about the size of a quarter. Don't know. Don't quote me on that. But um, yeah, so I fit all those, all those markers. I had neurofibromas. Um, they kept an eye on them to make sure that they weren't cancerous, so they weren't growing and they weren't, they were staying the same, they were benign. Um, and my cafe au lait spots, they started kind of traveling down my leg, but they were big enough to, and there were enough of them to mark me as having neurofibromatosis. So that's what I got. Um, they also did this procedure because I, the, the theory was that I could not feel when I had to use the restroom because I had neurofibromas blocking the receptors on my nerves so that when my bladder sent out the electric impulse that's like, hey, I'm getting full, I gotta go to the bathroom, I did not get that. Um, it would just go like, hey, I gotta go to the bathroom, and then the neurofibroma would be like, I'm not passing along that information. You don't get to know that. So I, I wouldn't know. And, um... So that was the running theory. So they were like, okay, well then you must have other n nerves that don't feel anything. So they then did this test where they put one metal stick in like freezing cold water and one metal stick in like boiling hot water, not boiling, but like really hot water. And then they put them on my thighs and they were like, okay, which thigh has the hot stick on it and which thigh has the cold stick on it? 
and I could like kind of feel that one was a little warmer than the other. Um, so I kind of just guessed. I was like, I think it's this one. And they were like, yeah, you should, you should like, no, you should like feel it. Um, so they made sure that I didn't have feeling in my, in that area. Um, and so that's how I got diagnosed. Um, they gave me a lot of pamphlets. And at first when I got my diagnosis, my parents were very upset. They were, you know, dealing with the information and reading the pamphlets and trying to grapple with it. And I was ecstatic. I was so happy. I had an answer for why I was having bladder issues. I thought that I was just a baby who didn't know how to control it and wasn't potty trained. Like I hated myself for it. Um, but I was like, no, I have an answer. It's not my fault. That feels so great. I'm like, I'm going to get answers. They're going to be able to fix me. Like, it's going to be great. Like, I, it's, and I also felt special. I was like, I have something interesting about me. I have something, you know, I'm not just a plain old person. I have like an interesting new fun thing about me. Um, so I was, I was ecstatic and I told all my friends, I, I didn't tell them all the details uh, about how I got diagnosed, but I told them, I was like, I have this disease. And at first I had like misinformation. I was like, it's a skin disease. Um, cause I knew that the neurofibromas were on my skin. So, and like the cafe or lay spots were on my skin. So I was like, oh, it's a skin disease. I don't know. It has something to do with something. Either way, like I have this disease, I have this genetic disease. And then we started theorizing, which parent did I get it from? I was like, well, my mom has ADHD, which is a learning disability. And a lot of times people with neurofibromatosis have learning disabilities. I was like, but my dad kind of has some lumps that could be neurofibromas. Like, I'm like, who could it be? Like, what's happening? My mom has a lot of freckles. Like, what's this? Um, and so I was just, I was excited and it was like a fun discovery. And then I, I kept going back to the clinic and I kept getting more information. And I learned that there was nothing that they could do because the ner the neurofibromas on my nerves were just a little too small for them to operate on. And it was in too high intensive of a area for them to operate on because one wrong move and I would be paralyzed for life. Um, so there was no way to remove them. There was no medicine for it. There was nothing that, you know, makes it, makes the tumor smaller. Um, so that was kind of a blow, but I was like, you know what? I still have this interesting thing about me. I still have answers. Like I can work with this, like the doctors can help me. And the doctors, I told them my situation and I was like, so what can I do? Like, what's, what are we gonna do about this? And they were like, try going to the bathroom more? I don't know. So thankfully now I have, I schedule out when I use the restroom. So that's how I tackle that. Um, but it still sometimes gets in the way, but I, I pretty, I pretty much have it under control at this point. Um, but yeah, that's how I got diagnosed. And then again, later, like I went back to the clinic and they were like, well, you don't, you have good grades. You don't seem to have any large neurofibromas. You don't have any big, you know, deformities or anything like that. I don't think you have it. And so then they did the biopsy and it turned out that I did have NF and that I had a mutation. So neither of my parents have it. I just was lucky and mutated and as a fetus to have this disease. And so that was also rough and also when I was 11, they told me that since it is genetic and since it was located where it's located, there's a high chance I could pass it on to my children. And my children may not be as lucky as me. They may have a decreased quality of life. They may have much larger deformities. Um, they may have neurofibromas on their heart or on their lungs or in their brain or any in their eyes somewhere else. Um, so they said, when you are ready to have children, you need to talk to us and you need to, we need to evaluate your options um, because you may not be able to have your own children. 
and they also brought up that because of the placement of my neurofibromas around my uterus and my um, bladder area, I may not be able to survive a pregnancy. And that's kind of when it stopped being fun for me because I, I always wanted to have kids. I always saw myself as a mother and I was always excited to be a mom and it just really sucked that that was kind of taken away from me. Um, and I thought about it for a really long time and this, this may be controversial, um, but I decided that I would adopt because I didn't want to risk giving birth to children who would have no mother because I died during the pregnancy or I didn't want to have to have a child whose quality of life was terrible or a child who lived to see five years old and not much longer than that. Um, I just don't know if I'd be able to handle it. And I decided to adopt instead because there are always kids who need a good home and I know I can be a good home for, for adopted kids and you know, adoption doesn't mean that it's any less your children or anything like that. It's just a different way of getting your children. Um, so I decided I would adopt and I've stuck with that for you since then for what, 12 years. Um, and so that was hard for me, but that was something that I've grappled with since then and something that I've moved, moved on from. Um, but it was, it was hard to learn and that was hard to deal with. Um, but that really changed the way that I felt about it and I started to get more annoyed at it and I was bitter and I felt like, why did I have to have this out of everybody else? Why me? Why did I have to deal with this? It's not fair. It's not okay. It, it was very frustrating for me and it made me very angry. Um, and it just like really wore on me for a really long time and it would annoy me because my family always said that the freckles around my waist were so cute and so adorable because they're cute little freckles like just on my tummy, but I hated them. I hated what they represented. They represented this piece of me that I would have to be a freak forever. I felt like obviously if you have a disability you're not a freak but like that's just how I felt that was middle school me internalizing things and having these negative thoughts I was like I'm gonna be a freak forever I'm never gonna be fully able to go to the bathroom at the right time I'm never gonna be able to have my own children and I'm like also this is gonna you know it may grow and it may expand so I don't even know how it's going to affect me in later years which part of me convinced myself that it wouldn't affect me in any different way that I that was just what was gonna happen and then that I had a rude awakening in high school when I had severe back pain which I ignored for a long time because I was like oh it's just you know backpacks and I walk a lot and everybody has some back pain and stuff like that and then I it totally gave out on me and I realized that there was a problem and I went to the doctors and they were like, yeah, it's probably related to your NF. Um, but since then I've gotten less angry. I've gotten less bitter about the whole thing. I've accepted it. I've accepted that that's just a part of me and it's something that's not necessarily good or bad. It's just something that's a part of me and I do still like that. It kind of makes me interesting that it's I'm like, it's a fun little factoid about me. Um, and I've come to terms with it now. And it still does make me angry sometimes. Sometimes when I'm at a low point, I do get very upset that I have to deal with this and that it's a part of my life now. But most of the time, I'm I'm okay with it. And I, I, I've accepted it. It's just the hardest part for me now is the pity. I can't stand the pity. When I tell people about it and they're like, oh, you poor thing. I don't know how you can deal with it. I could never, like, I don't know how. You're so brave. That's so frustrating. Because what's my other choice? How am I brave? 
what would you do? How would you not deal with it? Would you kill yourself? Is that what you're telling me to do? Is that that's the appropriate response to it? That's the normal response to it is just to kill myself because I have a disability now? Like, I'm not brave. I'm just dealing with it the way any human would. The way many other humans do. It's and I don't want your pity because I don't feel bad for myself about it. Like I have dealt with it and like I've, I did throw myself a little pity party, you know, for a little bit there. But like I got over it. Like I don't need your pity. It doesn't help. And like it doesn't. I don't need you to tell me how brave I am because I'm not being brave. I'm not. I'm not fighting against it. It's just something I live with. It's like if you went up to a redhead and were like, oh my god, you're so brave for being a redhead. It's like, no, that's just something that they do. That's just who they are. That's just, there's nothing bad or good about it. It's just happening. Um, yeah, I can't stand the pity. So if you have somebody in your life with a disability or you meet somebody who has a disability, please don't say how brave they are. Please don't say you poor dear, please don't give them your pity. Just be like, oh wow, like, you're really strong. That, that must be really tough. Good for you, you know what I mean? Like, you can mention their strength because it's hard to get through. And you can mention that it may be hard and acknowledge their struggles and acknowledge the things that they have to go through, but don't pity them. Because that's just dehumanizing and that's just frustrating. Um. But yeah, so that's that was my experience getting diagnosed with neurofibromatosis. And it's kind of an ongoing experience, especially as it changes going forward. Because I may, there may be things in the future that I don't know about now that will happen. And there may be things in the future that don't happen. And it'll, we'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, so that was my experience. And I hope you learned something. And I hope you grew a little as a person through this. Have a good Valentine's Day.